They say that the eyes are the window to the soul. I saw love in Mandy's eyes starting a month or two after we met through our wedding and two daughters. Ten wonderful years, eight of them married. We were determined, almost fanatical, to have dinner together as a family every night. It was our main thing. No matter what we ate, there was always a look of love at the table. Heaven on earth. You know how a child grows day by day and you never notice it until a relative or friend stops by a year or so later and says, gosh, they've grown so much. Similarly, I missed the gradual pulling of the curtains, as I call it. The love in Mandy's eyes for the kids never changed, but the way she looked at me, slowly, imperceptibly, changed over the last year. I didn't notice it. I just didn't notice the blinds being drawn, perhaps because it was happening so slowly. Until the Christmas party last December, her firm, she's a 32-year-old paralegal at one of the big law firms in town, threw it every year. Since she started working there four years ago, it's always been a nice party, not overwhelming. A chance for spouses to meet colleagues and their spouses, as I said, a nice spirit of the season. This last meeting was no different from the previous ones, except for coming back from the bar with drinks for the two of us. I saw this. Bam! Just like John Madden. Her enthusiastic gaze in full bloom and shining on someone else, not me. A smile consuming her face, ignoring everything else. When I approached, Winslow Featherton, one of her firm's senior partners, was standing at our table, resting his hand on Mandy's uncovered shoulder. Her eyes were closed. The two were laughing at a shared joke, probably his. And she had that look on her face, a look of rapturous love that for years had been mine alone, but had gone AWOL for the last year. Laser focus only on him. The impact almost made me drop our drinks. Boom! In an instant, my life was cut short. My breathing froze and my heart stopped. The first feeling that swept over me was helplessness. Shock and pain followed a split second later. Placing the drinks on the table, I turned and walked out into the dark patio to catch my breath. I could only shake my head. Featherton had more money, better looks, more prestige, more everything than I did. He definitely had more expensive cars, clothes, and a much swankier house, with servants and everything. Flew around in a private jet. He was part of the city party scene and was in all the right clubs. He had everything and could have anyone, certainly prettier than my wife. He didn't have to cook dinner when the lady of the house was late or busy doing something else, which, come to think of it, my Mandy had been busy doing lately. He could play the role of superhero in the boardroom while I dutifully took care of mundane chores like laundry, dinner, getting the kids to their schoolwork and to the doctor when they had runny noses. From Mandy's point of view, there could be no competition between me and Featherbucks. Even that was clear, even to me. In the cool night air, the vapor of my exhalation vanished, as did my future. She must have been over the moon that someone at whose feet the whole world lay had taken an interest in her. There must be plenty of Kate Uptons, Jessica Simpsons, and the like willing to drool for his dollars, so why chase after my wife? She was pretty, but she wasn't the kind of girl that millionaires usually swat away like summer flies on a cow patty. So yes, I could understand how she might have freaked out at the compliment and the increase in his attention to her, but him? What to do? If I confronted her face to face, she'd get political. Deny, deny, deny. Any hint of accusation would only add to the damage already done. This was not a battle I could win. An arrogant boss and a traitorous bitch had ruined the best thing in my life. So I decided the best way out was to move on with my life as best and as fast as I could. Damn bitch. My hot anger turned into cold, calculating anger. Taking a deep breath, I walked back into the house. Sure enough, the two of them were standing where they'd been before, and her glow of adoration hadn't diminished. I walked over to the table and taking her drink, held it out to her. She took it her trance unbroken. With a brief nod to the new love of her life, I handed Mandy the car keys. I was just leaving. I see you're not ready yet, so I'll take an Uber. I looked at her new lover, and I'm already ready. She undoubtedly didn't understand my double meaning. Distracted, she smiled at me. Okay, honey, I'll see you at home. No, I won't see you. Both of them frowned. What was that? She asked. 
Look, I'm not going to make a scene here. This, I pointed to my eye, may be green, but it's not a cabbage. I can see that Mr. Featherton has won your heart. Why shouldn't he? He's richer than I am, better looking, better connected, more successful. I'm just a regular guy making regular money doing regular things. How can I compete? He never had to nurse you through the flu or hold your hand when your babies were born. He's never had to clean up your vomit when you drank too much, never had to buy period pads, take your kids to the doctor or to school plays, so it's easy for him to be your new superhero. He's your match made in heaven. Go ahead and take action. If you expect me to compete, I shook my head, don't hold your breath. I don't have to fight for your respect or affection if you have a shred of decency in you. You either love me or you don't. They both opened their mouths in shock. Before either of them could come to their senses, I finished. Mandy, you're beautiful, sexy, and smart. Sure, not the most stylish, but nobody's perfect, right? His poor wife who couldn't make it tonight because he didn't want her to interfere with his adventures. Who gives a shit about her? Certainly not you. He's cheated on her so many times he's earned frequent flyer status. And their three kids? They can handle it. Millions of divorced kids, right? And who cares if our two girls are added to that number? Certainly not their mother. So, to answer your question, no, I won't be there when you get home after letting Mr. Featherdick get into your panties tonight. I'll get my stuff out as soon as I can, meet with my lawyer on Monday, and you'll be free to have fun with Featherfart here as often as you want and for as long as you want. Just what you wanted, right? I turned and headed for the exit, pulling out my phone to call an Uber. Mark, wait! Her frantic yell caught me as I stepped outside. I turned my phone off, stopped, and turned around. That's not what... Oh, bullshit. Look, I'm not going to argue with you and your lies. I know you better than anyone else. Pointing to my eye again, I continued. I saw what I saw. You can spin it all you want, but you and I both know the truth. It was the feathery bastard that got your heart, not me. I can see it in your eyes. The next point in his victory campaign is the swamp between your legs. Everyone has seen the way you look at him, just like you used to look at me. I've seen you leave me inch by inch over the last few months. I'm not going to listen to your lies and denial. You know the score as well as I do. I took both of her hands and looked into her tear-filled eyes. I don't know if you've slept with him yet, but your eyes tell me that if you haven't, it's only a matter of time. You can ruin your life if you want, but there's no way I'm going to stand by and let you ruin mine. I'm out of here. No, Mark, please. It's not like that. He's just... Mandy, wait. Are you telling me you have no attraction or affection for Featherfuck? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Her eyes begged me to believe the lie. Rolling my eyes, I took a deep breath. We have a difference. I've seen something, something undeniable, and you say I have nothing to see, which makes our differences irreconcilable. Do you know what happens to irreconcilable differences? No. Why? They become the basis for most divorces in this country. Like I said, I'm not going to argue with you. Only you know what's in your heart. Only you know if fucking Feather Dick is worth his kids and our kids losing their fathers. Your look tells me it is. I picked up the phone again. No, Mark, wait, please. Let me go get my keys. I'll go home with you. No, I don't want to interrupt your sex with Feathered. He's salivating to get into your panties tonight. For the first time, Mandy's body language became fiery. Fuck you and your pity party, Mark. To hell with Featherton. You're right, all right. Are you happy now? Is that what you wanted to hear? I had a lapse in judgment, a big lapse, and I let it get to me. I'm sorry. It's over from now on, history. Right now. Come with me. We'll leave together, but not without my purse and coat. I love you. You're my husband, and you're taking me home. So, what do we do? Do you want to wait here like a crying coward, or do you want to come with me while I get my things and hold my hand like your wife as we leave? It wasn't much of a choice, was it? We walked in together. Feathered was standing at another table, already charming another brainless simpleton. Mandy walked up to him and calmly said, I'm leaving, and I suggest you stop harassing her. Everyone is laughing at you. Turning, she took my hand as we left the stunned audience. On the way home, she took my hand and cried. You were right. 
Oh my god, I'm so sorry. It's a classic frog in a pot situation as the water slowly heats up. I didn't notice it was happening until you opened my eyes tonight. You're right, you don't deserve this. It's all my fault. I fell for his power over me. Like a schoolgirl, I fell for his bullshit. Please forgive me, it's all on my conscience. You're still my true love. I don't need anyone else but you. You're more important to me than any job or person, that's why I quit. Can you forgive me? I never had sex with him. I never even kissed him or anything. I'll take a lie detector test if you can't find it in your heart to believe me. I'm not saying I wasn't on that path, but thankfully you shined a light on my stupidity in time. She stroked my arm. Please forgive me. I'll do anything. Anything? Yes, anything. You saw I started by quitting even though it was a great job. Anything? I interjected, raising my eyebrows. Yes, my dear. Anything. Well, almost. No other people, no hall passes, nothing like that. Just something for the two of us. Like a week for the two of us on a lonely beach in the Caribbean? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. The veil disappeared from her smiling eyes.